good morning, everyone. Um, in this uh, first part of the discussion, I would like to, to share with every one of you my experiences with working with a lot of local people, especially the local fishers and the teachers and some volunteer, volunteer teachers and students and also the people from the local government in the Philippines and in the Lagoon of Venice, Italy. So I would like to share uh, a little bit of the background of my previous research. Uh, that's where they contributed a lot, these local people, the volunteer teachers and students and staff from the government. Um, we were doing this research. Um, I'm always collaborated with Baiba, Dr. Baiba. And we're, we, we're doing this research since 2018. Um, we interviewed the, because, oh, sorry, I, a little bit background of the research of, the, of, of, of our study region, the Lagoon of Venice and the Philippines. We're studying this region through the knowledge of the local fishers because of the main problems in this region, such as the decline in the fishery and um, how it is related to also the decline of their habitats in this region. So um, how the local people, volunteer teachers and students are taking part of this project. Um, in our field works in the Philippines and in Laguna Venice, Italy, we are always, I'm sorry, I'm out of my spot here. <laughs> um, in, in, our, in our research, they, we have been working with them and how they are part of our research. Um, for the local fishers, they serve, they serve as our research guide during the field works. And always during our field, during the field work, uh, with the help of the volunteer teachers and students and the local staff from the government, they accompany us to, to go to the fishing villages and to interview the fishers. From, from speaking with the village leaders up to all the interviews we did in all these fishing villages in the Philippines and in the Lagoon of Venice. Also, um, another contribution of the local fishers and volunteer teachers and students, they is, aside, they are being our research guides to, to explore the ecosystems, the Lagoon of Venice and the Laguna Lake in the Philippines. They serve as our research guide. They brought us to all these fishing trips to observe their fishing activities. And they showed us um, the, the available plants in the lake, which are now declining, the available um, algae in the Lagoon of Venice, which are also being invasive and also declining at the same time. Uh, I mean, I meant about the seagrasses are declining. And also, they, they help us in collecting and identifying the plant samples, the important plants, uh, which serves as habitat spawning areas. And um, aside from that, habitat spawning areas and hiding places of all these uh, fish species in the Lagoon of Venice and in the Laguna Lake, Philippines. Aside from that, um, in our field interviews, they also mentioned to us all the, the food uses. So we are able to try all those dishes while during our field work. So it's one of the joy of the field work in the Philippines and in the Laguna of Venice. Also, um, aside from the local fishers, the teachers and the students, the volunteers, uh, we also spoke with the concerned fishery agencies from the local government. And okay, that's, that's my first part of the, of the discussion. Yeah, um, thank, thanks so much, Jimlia. Uh, Sonia, you had the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the topic of hackathons. So um, would you elaborate a bit, a bit on that? So what's Hi. that about? I will ask for your collaboration. Can you please stand up if you did an hackathon in your life? Stand up. Well, not so many. I was expecting all of you up because they are very popular now. And now, thank you so much. Uh, I'm asking you another questions uh, and, and two more questions. One, are you feeling comfortable to, be, to work with people that are very different from you? If you say yes, standing up. Okay, super. Now, wow. to be honest, uh, are you feeling comfortable to work with people that are very diverse from you? Think about it, other 30 seconds, and choose to stand up or not. Are you really feeling comfortable? Oh, someone is getting down. Okay, cool. You are super brave. Thank you for your <laughs> collaboration. 
The main purpose of this question is to prove the fact that uh, when you are in an uncomfortable zone, practically you want to pass from state A to state B. So you need to do something. And this for me is the most important part of creating a learning pathway. So the hackathon is really bringing people in an uncomfortable zone, not in a comfortable zone. At the beginning, they should be stressed. They should be uncomfortable. They should be, in a way, a little bit uh, also disrupt on the fact that people in the team they have are very different from them. And this is the most important part. Diversity is a value in a hackathon. So what is an hackathon in education? Hackathon is the way how we can work in an inclusive way with people very different from us in a transdisciplinary way, and I will tell you what does it mean for me, transdisciplinary <laughs> way of working, and to be able to get an idea, to get an opportunity that can become a solution. I will never use the word problem. I'm against the word problem. I'm also linking my speech now with what I learned from the speech before, because I think transdisciplinary art is really also like that. We learn from each other in an iteration in a co-construction of knowledge together. So practically there are no problems, there are a lot of opportunities. And that's the first meaning that we give in a hackathon. What is an hackathon definitely doesn't come from education, it comes from the company approach, the business approach, the ICT approach, was a solution for companies for getting ideas in a fast way. In 12 hours, 48 hours, maximum three days, they were bringing people from different environments and sector, asking them, you have to come out with a new ideas. Because we are a company, the competitiveness outside is very strong. We need to get out with something new. So please work on that. Time construction or time uh, limited. And at the end, many ideas were able to come out, uh, many creativities, many talents, uh, and of course, uh, new business and money for the companies and the ICT companies how we moved from that sector to the education. Practically, we don't do exactly the same. We are not looking forward to open a startup when we apply hackathon in class. We use the hackathon as a challenge-based learning approach, as a tool to help the people to work together, again, from different sectors, from different disciplines, from different age, intergenerational for me is also another key point, together with inclusiveness that goes to use the transdisciplinarity for social approach in a good way. And at the end of this uh, process of learning, which is very co-constructive, it's the co-creation approach that we will discuss it later, it's really related to that, they are able to come out uh, not with new ideas and so for solving a problem, but with some ideas that come out from their reflection, their self-reflection, their co-construction, and what I'm calling the emergent design approach that we use it. Let me say something about myself, only one thing. I actually was graduated first in communication studies. I did my specialization in interaction design. I got my master in marketing and my thesis for the engineer department of PhD was about food and now I'm working in an agriculture department. I am transdisciplinary, okay? <laughs> there is no other way to say. And for me, this was a problem. For the entire my life was a problem because people cannot understand that the mindset it was mentioned before, it's something that you can use it in your daily life, in your teaching approach, uh, in your way of working. Definitely, it was a problem. I'm starting in the past two years thinking that maybe it's not so much a problem now, and the people are starting to realize it. I didn't change my life, but the people are starting to reflect on what I'm doing differently. So I think we are in a good mood, and this book, I wanna thank the editors, will become a milestone for many people that wants to approach to this uh, topic, I think. Yeah, uh, th thanks so much for, 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 for the introduction of the, your, your two topics. I just like, um, find it interesting to think about the hackathon as something goal-oriented because it, it consists out of the, the words marathon and to hack. Basically, it's like the idea to, to use um, certain techniques to, to, yeah, to um, uh, experimental the, the techniques to, to get to a certain goal or to solve a problem, the word you don't like. Because oft oftentimes, I mean, like I worked at startups, of course, and uh, 
well, they they implied hack hackathons as, as as kind of um, trying to overcome certain obstacles, um, which some sometimes would lead to more problems even. So basically, because of the goal orientation, would you would you would you um, or would you say that the goal re orientation is not something okay. deeply embedded into the? It's not really the goal yeah. oriented, but is the challenge. Challenge and goal are two different words. The project based learning that was mentioned before does have a completely different approach. When you have a goal and you have a project, think about a teacher. I'm now trying to use as an example in my mind to, to talk with you and to maybe answer to your question about Hackathon in elementary school or middle school, not in a startup level or higher school or university that maybe some of you knows better. But an Hackathon in elementary school helps the teacher not to do project-based learning approach in which the teacher gives you the problem, the goal, the instruments, where to find the resources, go ahead. This is the project-based learning. Challenge-based learning is there is a challenge, go ahead and find your resources, find the place where to find the resources. You are the protagonist of your learning uh, pathway and we are the protagonist of your learning and teaching pathway. So practically, we are all together in the same uncomfortable zone, and together we have to figure out how to get to the end. So very different, very, I would say, proactive, very important for the agency of the students, very important for the responsibility was mentioned before. Nowadays, we need more responsibility than maybe some are the instruments that you have to use it. So it is not based on, I'm giving you the canvas, I'm giving you three post-it, go ahead, this is what you have to do. This is wrong. When you see an akato done in this way, it is designed in a wrong way yeah. because you are giving them something very structured. And instead, an akaton should be unstructured to provide unexpected solution from the people that are based in the, in the co-creation process. Because unfortunately, uh, we uh, are more familiar with the business approach of the hackathon and less about the co-design and the co-creation co approach that we can apply in hackathon. So I strongly believe the educational side of the hackathon is still not very well known in the field of the education. So, so it must be improved. So in this sense, it's quite close to comes quite close to your uh, notion of of citizen science. So mm -hmm. that it's mostly about. Uh, engaging untrained, untrained, unprofessional people like, for example, students are before they earn a certain degree, they are they can be considered um, uh, th to have knowledge, nevertheless. So, what would would you say uh, is, is 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 the strength of of citizen science? Isn't it that that, that um, utilizing, for example, indigenous knowledges from fishermen, from mm -hmm. from people who who are not like trained in a certain way, with uh, they don't have a theoretical knowledge, but they have practical knowledge. And okay. is it um, is it something that resonates with you? The hackathon. Have you ever have you ever done something like a hackathon? Okay, in my case, uh, because we've been working with the local fishers, um, we in in my in my previous studies up to now, we are considering them as the local experts because they are the ones who ha who who are very knowledgeable about the. For example, I'm speaking with the Laguna Lake Philippines and the Laguna of Venice. These local fishers are very knowledgeable of all the of all the changes, of all the, the positive and negative aspects of these regions. So we consider them as local experts because their knowledge is based from their long-term fishing experiences in this region. We're talking about uh, five decades of, of fishing experiences, which I, I remember what Baiba said, which is the, the satellite data cannot, cannot, uh, cannot detect or something like that. So uh, we we are we have been working with them. We have been collaborating with them to get as research guides, and we we interview them. And it it is from their perception. Uh, we would like to represent how they they view the Laguna Lake Philippines and the Laguna of Ve the Laguna of Venice changes in the past, uh, based on their uh, decades and decades of fishing experiences. And we involve the some local people like the teachers and the students, because um, 
We would like to, to start in the Philippines where I come from. We would like to start that they are part of the, they are part of the research process. In this, uh, the, the knowledge coming from them, coming from the fishers especially, could be, could be integrated into their learning, local learning materials, which could be uh, put into their subjects in their schools. Yeah, um, I, I was always thinking of the hackathon as a certain ca um, certain um, mold for 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 um, citizen science to take place in. So basically, like the idea to have to give agency to to non experts and to um, actually engage engage them in a in a fashion to say like, well, yeah, in this this or that uh, framework, you can actually be creative, you can, be, you, you can have the agency that normally is reserved for, for professionals in the field. Would you, uh, um, I mean like, have you, have you yourself uh, viewed it this way or have you, I mean like, especially for, for using it in educational backgrounds? Yeah. I just also want to say that the article you will find in the book, uh, it, I have different co-authors that I decided to involve because they were protagonists of some of those hackathons that you mentioned. Because historically, I told you, we started from an industry and then more and more we needed complexity to be solved and more we realized that hackathon could be a good solution because it's fast, it's very transdisciplinary, it's very inclusive, it's very intergenerational, it's very transcultural. So the people started saying maybe we need the hackathon for solving social issue or uh, uh, to apply for citizen um, purposes. I think in the book there are many examples we, we, we listed, but one that I want to mention is the one that was made in 2020 when the pandemic arrived and there was this big hackathon online. That's another point. Hackathon can be done in a physical, physical world. So I'll in online, alpha in a hybrid situation or in person, but that was the hugest uh, hackathon ever, and it was asked to everybody in the world to solve the problem of the pandemia. So yes, the importance of the hackathon in that moment, and it was launched by the FAO, the UN. So everybody was like pushing to use the hackathon as a challenge-based learning, not like there is a problem, let's solve it. It was really like this is a challenge. We have no idea where to go. We have no idea what it is. Uh, we never experienced an, a pandemia before. So that's the difference between a problem. We didn't know what problem was the pandemia. It was a complexity, but it cannot be defined as a problem where in March 2020 we realized where we were. So practically that was a challenge and everybody participated from all around the world. Uh, we also dedicate time with the editor discussing and saying, not taking this as a Western mindset. We should say that hackathon are going to be used also in other countries, in other continents for problems that are not only based on business and companies uh, request. So I think nowadays uh, the way how we use hackathon personally, we use it uh, to act the village, to help municipality, to talk with their citizen, to come out with real problems because most of the time the problems they identify are not the right one are the ones that uh, instead can be solved easily and instead they have big complexity that need a lot of work. So I, I strongly believe this is a way for municipality, for um, uh, policymakers, I would say policymakers, so the people have, that works with policymakers, to do something in a, do, in a different way. Um, for this reason, I want to say what is for me transdisciplinarity with a very simple example, if I can. Um, which I use with my students as well. Um, and this came with the three definitions of multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, and transdisciplinarity, which we use as synonymous, but they are not. And the easiest way to define this is a room. Take a white room, that's the example, and bring a farmer, a policymaker, a designer, and a scientist inside. They stay in silence, they don't speak. There's a white room, white wall, they say for 30 minutes, I'm getting out and I'm saying this is a multidisciplinary room. Is it right? Is it right? They are multidisciplinary, they are in a room, and that's a multidisciplinary room. They don't do anything, they don't speak, but we can say this is a multidisciplinary room. Second, I'm getting inside of the same room and I'm saying to the same people, hey guys, we have a, a challenge. We have to fight the anger in the world. Something simple, okay. So please, <laughs> yeah, help me to really. figure out how to do it. Not one idea, two ideas, three ideas, whatever you have, please help me. What we will have it. 
people will start to discuss. Maybe we will have a leader. Maybe we will have some loser. Maybe we will have people say, I have no idea. Others will say, I know how to do it. They fight, they don't. 50-50% to find out an idea. This is an interdisciplinary room. They start to interact between disciplines. We don't know where they will go. We, 55% they will figure out a solution, but 50% no, maybe they will fight. So why we need a third word? Yes. What it will happen again in the same room? What we can ask them to do? So we go to the room, we say same kind of challenge to fight the hunger in the world, but now use transdisciplinarity. The transdisciplinarity can be defined in this way. Each of us does have a lens of investigation, no glasses, because if I give my glasses to him, he doesn't see anything, okay? Because we have different also use of the glasses. Lens of investigation are different, can see the problem in a different way, the challenge, the opportunity in a different way. We can borrow the lens from each other, but the most important part is the fact that after borrow, we leave the lens back to them and we continue with our own expertise. So the designer will borrow the lens from the scientists, from the farmer and policy maker, but later on, they will give the lens back and they will continue as a designer. And this, if it is applied at the same time altogether, will create a transdisciplinary methodology approach. Apply it. 100% the final solution will be a win-win solution because you will take care of all of the lens of investigation but also of all of the expertise of the five people in the room. Is it easy? No. Can we learn it? Yes. It's a mindset? Yes, but it's not an attitude. That's another point. It must be learned. There are methodologies. Design is a methodology. Design is always transdisciplinary. And design can be used for this approach. That's why hackathon, I would say more design approach, can be used for citizen approach, for educational approach, for any context in which we need to find a way to solve a complexity that we have.